Are you visiting Banff, Jasper, and Yoho National Parks in Canada? These are the things you need to know before you go. Banff, Jasper, and Yoho National Parks are some of the most beautiful places on Earth. If you're going to go during peak season of June to August, you must plan ahead and know these tips before you go. There is a full video on each of the three parks. The links are in the description. Tip number one, allocate enough time. If you only have three days, you should visit Banff and Lake Minnewanka on day one, Lake Louise and Moraine Lake on day two, and Yoho on day three. On day one, get to Lake Minnewanka before 9 a.m. Take the lake cruise or rent a canoe and walk around the lake. Go to the town of Banff for lunch and walk around the town. Then, go to either Banff Gondola to the top of Sulphur Mountain or hike up Tunnel Mountain for a great view of the town and finish the day with a drive to Mount Norquay viewpoint with dinner in Banff. On day two, visit Lake Louise and Moraine Lake. See the tip below on the very important information how to get to the lakes. On day three, visit Takakal Falls, Emerald Lake, and the Natural Bridge in Yoho National Park. Hike the Lakeshore Loop and Hamilton Falls at Emerald Lake, or rent a canoe to paddle on the lake. If you have six days, go do the first three days like above, and then on day four, Drive up the Icefields Parkway to Jasper. Visit Peyto Lake, Columbia Icefields Glacier Tour, Tangle Creek Falls, and Athabasca Falls. Dinner and overnight at Jasper. You really shouldn't do the Icefields Parkway as a round trip from Banff to Jasper and back in one day. You just got too much to see and you're going to skip a lot of very interesting sites. On day five, visit Maline Canyon first and then stop at Medicine Lake and do some hiking at Malign Lake, either the Mary Schaefer Loop or Moose Lake. In the afternoon, take the cruise to Spirit Island before returning to Jasper for dinner. Visit Pyramid Lake if you have time. On day six, return via Icefields Parkway. Get to Mount Edith Cavell by 10 a.m. and hike the path to Glacier Trail. Visit Valley of the Five Lakes Trail next, and then stop at Sawapta Falls, visit Johnston Canyon in the late afternoon, and hike to the Upper Falls. If you want to really enjoy the parks, you really should spend 10 days there. The extra time allows more hiking to get away from the crowd and for better scenery. If you have 10 days, I would spend one day each at Lake Louise and Moraine Lake, maybe even more. At Lake Louise, hike to the Big Beehive and Lake Agnes Tea House, in addition to the Lake Shore Trail. At Moraine Lake, hike the Constellation Lakes and the Lake Shore Trails. Before I go to tip number two, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Tip number two, very important. Plan ahead on how you will get to Lake Louise and Moraine Lake. Lake Louise and Moraine Lake are very popular. The parking lot at each lake fills up very quickly. During our visit in August, Lake Louise parking lot is full by 7.30 a.m. and Moraine Lake parking lot is full by 3.30 a.m. People literally spend the night in their car so they can catch sunrise at Moraine Lake. During the day, as people leave, they open the road sporadically to let the lucky few in. While we were there, every time we pass by, the lots were always closed. If you're lucky enough to get a parking space, the cost is $12.25 per day, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. There are three basic ways to access the lakes besides driving. First, from mid-May to mid-October, take the Parks Canada shuttle from the parking lot in the town of Lake Louise to either Lake Louise or Moraine Lake. The shuttles are reserved for a particular date and a particular departure time from the park and ride lot. You can return any time while the shuttle is operating, but you may need to wait if there is a line. You should reserve the shuttle at least a month ahead, maybe three months ahead, if you want your preferred time slot. 
The cost is $8 for adults to either lake. There is a lake connector shuttle between the two lakes that is free as long as you have a ticket to either lake. But it's only valid on the day of your ticket. If you cannot get the time slot for the shuttle to the lake that you want, but you can get the time slot off the other lake, you can take that shuttle and then get on the lake connector shuttle to get to your preferred lake. We made our reservation for the shuttle a month ahead of time for mid-August visit. By that time, the only times that were available were 3 p.m. and later. In the 15 minutes or so that we spent at the Lake Louise Visitor Center in town, there were lots of frustrated people that learned the shuttles were fully booked for the next several days. I don't want you to be one of those people, so plan ahead and book ahead. The advantage of taking the shuttle are flexibility and cost. You can spend as much time as you want at either lake and do some hiking. This is also relatively low cost. The disadvantage is, of course, you have to plan ahead of the time to get the time slots you want. The second way to get to the lakes is to take a tour. Now tours are available from Banff and Calgary and often include other stops. The advantage of this method is you have access to the lakes. The disadvantages are cost and flexibility. It is much more expensive than the shuttle and typically you get about an hour at each lake. Barely enough time to jostle with the crowd to get that iconic picture and to stretch your legs. Forget about doing any kind of hiking. You can also hire a taxi from Lake Louise or Banff, which gives you flexibility but costs a lot more than a shuttle. There is no Uber at Lake Louise. The third way is to stay at a hotel within walking distance. If you stay at the Paradise Bungalows, which is a fantastic place with lots of cabins and also some rooms, uh, you are within walking distance, about 20 minutes, to Lake Louise. So you can leave your car here and just walk up, which is what we did uh, each and every day that we went. And it was it's not a bad walk, it's you know, relatively pleasant except for a short stretch where, where you are really right next to the road. There's another lodge further up the road called the Deer Lodge. And uh, that's also right next to Lake Louise. And from there, it's actually a very short walk. Uh, that lodge is not too far away from the Fairmont. And of course, if you can spend loads of money, stay at the Swanky Fairmont. Iconic, right on Lake Louise. You, if you have a, a, a room facing the lake, it is absolutely gorgeous. Of course, you do have to deal with the crowd, but uh, they do try to keep most of the public away from the hotel. Once you get to Lake Louise, you can use the Parks Canada Lake Connector Shuttle to get to Moraine Lake. The first one departs Lake Louise at 9 a.m. The Fairmount provides a shuttle to Moraine Lake for a $20 fee for their guests. So here's another tip for you. If you want to go to Lake Louise and you're driving, and you get up there and there's no more parking available, one thing that you might want to try is as you're coming up the Lake Louise Road, right after immediately after you pass the Moraine Lake uh, Junction there is a picnic area on your right called Fairview this little sign that says Fairview in there there's a picnic area with a bunch of parking space so if you get here relatively early and that area is not filled up you could in fact park there and then walk up to Lake Louise it's about a 25 minute uh, walk uh, with a little bit of a hill in order to get to Lake Louise, but it's certainly doable. Uh, and uh, there is a path along the side of the road, uh, which is uh, not too bad, not too bad to, uh, to walk up. If you go to Lake Louise, you're going to see a lot of people gather right as the walkway ends and you see the beautiful lake mesmerizing. But the tip is, get out of there quickly. Walk around the lake. The further down the uh, path that you go, the fewer the people. And better yet, pick one of the trails to your ability and go on a hike in the woods. Very often, the trail goes by streams that are just pristine and wonderful. So get away from the crowd by going on a hike. When you come to Banff, please stay a while. Don't do what most people do. I heard that the average time a person spends at Lake Louise 
is 15 minutes. Now, why would you go through all that trouble and all that time to come to Lake Louise and spend 15 minutes? That just makes no sense. Um, but I can see that. I mean, you know, when you get off the bus uh, or the car, it there's one area where there's just a ton of people. And as soon as you get away from that place, the crowd really thins out. So if you come, please get off away from all of the people and go on a hike. Tip number four, get to popular sites early. The best way to avoid the crowd at top sites is to get there early and go on hikes. You should get to Lake Louise and Moraine Lake before 10 a.m. to avoid the crowd and to have the best lighting to view the lakes. View the lake from the popular vantage points before the tour buses come. Then go for a hike to avoid the crowd. Johnston Canyon is another place you want to get there before 10 a.m. and before 9 a.m. if you want to avoid the crowd. The trail is narrow, so you will feel the crowd. Hike past the lower falls and you will see less people, but it will still feel crowded during peak times. If you want to get parking at Lake Minnewanka, get there before 10 a.m. or go after 4 p.m. On the Jasper side, you need to get to Athabasca Falls and Mount Edith Cavill before 10 o'clock to get parking. The morning light is much better at the Cavill Pond than the afternoon. At Yoho, you want to get to Takako Falls before 10 a.m. and to Emerald Lake before 11 o'clock. Getting up early is one of the sacrifices you have to make in order to avoid the crowd. Tip number five, dress in layers. When you come, dress in layers. It's cool in the morning, it gets hot in the afternoon, so make sure you dress in layers so you can take things on and off as you need to. And bring bug spray. Now there are some places that we went that got lots of mosquitoes and uh, some other places not so much. Uh, as we were hiking near the town of Banff, there was one trail where uh, I think, you know, I think the score was uh, Sydney 11 and mosquitoes three, meaning that I killed 11 mosquitoes and they bit me three times. I say that's not too bad, but after that, I put buck spray on. Tip number six are a collection of tips for visiting the glacier. So a couple of tips for coming up here. Uh, number one, dress warmly. It is on ice, so dress warmly. Number two, bring sunglasses because it's quite glary out here. And number three, wear something that has traction like boots. Hiking boots, don't come in flip-flops. And number five, number four, hopefully your boot is waterproof because your feet will get wet. You are walking on slush after all. So come prepared. The, uh, this particular tour that we're taking allows you to hang around on the ice for 20, 25 minutes. So you have enough time to explore. Tip number seven are the tips for visiting the Maline Lake. Here's a tip for you. For the Maline cruise, try to book yourself something in the afternoon, maybe even in the late afternoon. Because if you want to take a picture of Spirit Island with a beautiful mountain in the background, you need to have the sun on the other side of, uh, of the uh, mountains. So it's best in the afternoon, especially later in the afternoon. If you go in the morning, you will have the backlighting of the mountains, which does not make a good picture. Tip number eight. These are the things to know for visiting Emerald Lake. And we have gotten to Emerald Lake and we almost finished walking all the way around the Emerald Lake Loop, which is about 3.1 miles. It's relatively flat. Now you can go either clockwise or counterclockwise. I would actually recommend that you come um, as you come into the lake, uh, hang left, go past the boathouse, and go all the way to the other lake by the bridge, and then turn around and go back. It's actually more beautiful that way than to keep going, because uh, on the other side of the lake, there's really just the trees and uh, lots of roots and unsteadiness. And uh, you know, if you loop around that way at the end, you go see basically nothing but chalets and uh, houses, which is not particularly uh, beautiful. 
we've been to three lakes kind of like this on this trip. The more famous Lake Louise, the more famous Moraine Lake, and then we have this Emerald Lake. Now all three lakes were uh, got this turquoise water to varying degrees. Uh, I think uh, Lake Louise has got the deepest color and uh, Emerald Lake has got the second and uh, Moraine Lake has got the, the less color, but they're all very much the same. Now, if you have a look at the three lakes, definitely Lake Louise has got a very grand focal point that the, the lake ends in a glacier and that's just fantastic and beautiful to look at. Moraine Lake, on the other hand, gives you a nice uh, viewpoint from above that you have to climb up to see, but from that vantage point, the lake is absolutely beautiful. It's more intimate. It's uh, got the big cliffs uh, that seem to be closer together. There's a smaller lake, and uh, I like that actually better than Lake Louise. Uh, and then you have the Emerald Lake. Now, Emerald Lake, as you can see, is not quite as big, nor is it quite as grand, uh, but what it has going for it is it has a lot less people. Uh, if, the, if I were to choose one lake to come to, I would probably choose this one, followed by a very quick stop at Lake Louise just to see the grandeur. But the reason I wanted to pick this one is because you don't have the crowd. You don't have to worry about bus shuttles and reservations or none of that stuff. Uh, and you don't have this throng of theme park-like crowd. Uh, coming in and snapping pictures. Uh, it's very tranquil here um, and uh, it, it's just beautiful to have this uh, turquoise water lake. Banff, Jasper, and Yoho National Parks are great places to visit for nature lovers. Know these tips and plan ahead of ways of problems and maximizes your trip. If these tips are useful to you, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the videos on Banff, Jasper, and Yoho National Parks. The links are in the description and on the screen.